Hey Trinity family, thanks for joining us today. It has been so great seeing some familiar faces come back over the last few weeks since our big reopening back in May. And a big welcome to our new members who have started coming after watching us for a few months online. Even if you're not ready to join us in person for worship, at least we have this avenue to worship with you today. If you are new to Trinity, please visit our website. There you can fill out our contact us form to drop us a line about yourself. You can also learn about in-person worship, and you can make a gift to our many ministries, this online ministry being one of them. I hope you have the best week. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next Sunday. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Parish. Uh, it is a beautiful day to praise the Lord together, and we're glad you're here with us. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to God on high and on earth. Peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy. Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, we beseech thee, thy household, the church, and thy steadfast faith and love, that by the help of thy grace we may proclaim thy truth with boldness and minister thy justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Open your hearts to the word of God. Our first reading is from Samuel. Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, 
I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men with floggings inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 66 responsively. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing the glory of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. All the earth bows down before you. Sing to you. Sing to you. Sing to you. Sing to your name. Come now and see the works of God, how wonderful he is in doing his in, in his doing toward all people. He turned the sea into dry land, so that they might. In his might he rules forever. His eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no rebel rise up against him. Bless our God, peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who beholds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our second reading is from Acts. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added at that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as, had, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go. I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet, be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me. Lord, make my tongue the pen of a skilled writer, that you would speak to me and through me to your people, that you would draw our hearts ever closer to you. Amen. Well, there's a lot of criticism these days of the church. You've, you've heard it. Church is boring, full of hypocrites, 
It's irrelevant. I don't need the church to be spiritual. I can be spiritual anywhere. Now, those are just the ones I've used. This morning, as we look through the book of Acts in our, uh, our look at the mission of God, we come to the first church and we consider the question, why the church? Why the church? So turn with me to page 7 in your bulletin and look at the Acts reading with me. 3,000 people have come to faith in the risen Jesus. That was Jim Huster preached on that last week. And what do they do now? Verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayers. That's church, right? (laughs) The apostles' teaching, not, not political opinions or the movie they watched on Friday or helpful life skills. This was the scriptures and the apostles' firsthand experience of the risen Lord. The fellowship. Rome systematically pitted people against one another. Patrician versus plebeian. Male versus female. uh, Citizen versus foreigner. Slave versus free. Rome maintained control through social division. We have a version of that today where paid algorithms feed us outrage to divide us. Here for the first time, humans are united across boundaries. And it was shocking. Diverse people with one another and for one another. Third one, the breaking of the bread. From the beginning, long before the New Testament was written or assembled, Christian worship was already centered around the Eucharist, the Lord's table. And finally, the prayers. The set prayers of their new faith prayed together what we call common prayer. The apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayers. It's church. So let's address the critiques of the church. The first one, church is boring. When I first became a Christian, I attended a non-boring church. 20 years into my walk with Jesus, I joined a church where we do the same thing every week, week in and week out. And I realized that while church every week had been exciting, exciting wasn't really what my soul needed. Anybody played a high school or college sport? A show of hands. That's, that's most of us. Okay. Okay. Um, When you play a high school or college sport, you practice to prepare for the game. You run drills. You you go through your plays over and over and over and over till you hate the coach. You're doing that to get the plays into muscle memory. Friends, historic Christian worship is a one-hour practice for the other 167 hours of your week. Think about what we do on Sundays. We we read God's word. We respond to God's word by proclaiming our faith, confessing our sins, receiving assurance of God's pardon, praying for the world. We're reconciled to one another in the peace. We give gifts, and then we kneel before the Lord to receive from God the Eucharistic feast. That's the Christian life in summary. Historic Christian worship is practice to quote former NBA player Allen Iverson, it's practice, man. Practice. We're talking practice. Practice is supposed to be boring. That's why Allen Iverson didn't want to go. Boring isn't a bug. It's a feature. The breaking of the bread and the prayers, that's ritual and repetition. And ritual and repetition are what practice is all about. Christian worship has been full of ritual and repetition for 2,000 years because that's the way that we get our faith imprinted on our lives. It's through ritual and muscle memory spiritually. Second, church is full of hypocrites. Hypocrite, by the way, the Greek word for actor. In ancient Greece, actors wore masks to tell the audience the emotion they were portraying. We all live with masks 
in our culture, in our circumstances, they place them on us. We don't come to church because we're perfect or don't have mass. We, we come to church because we aren't perfect and are trying to take them off. The church is a support group. It's like AA, except instead of anonymous, the church is SN, Sinners Anonymous. The church is where sinners like me are known. Trinity, taking off our masks and showing our true faces is an integral part of God remaking us into the image of his son. Third critique, church is irrelevant. You know, the word we translate church means those who are called out. Called out of the world into something different. Through the church, God is calling people into eternal life. A, a, an entirely different mode of being that starts now and lasts forever. The relationship of a lifetime for all eternity. But that difference isn't seen until after those 3,000 folks have devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayers. That fourfold pattern of gathering, it's after they're doing that that they have developed in them the qualities of life we see in verses 43 through 47. Look at them with me. Verse 43, and awe came upon every soul. Verse 44 and 45, they, they shared their stuff. They were selling stuff and giving it away. Verse 46, they have glad and generous hearts. Those are the fruits of a God-shaped life, of a life formed in the church. Now, I might be wrong on this one, but it sure seems to me that anything that can give us inspirational lives characterized by sharing in miracles externally and glad and generous hearts internally, anything like that makes the church the most relevant thing I could do with my life. Final critique. I don't need church. I could worship anywhere. I used to say this. Honestly, it's because my feelings were hurt by some church people. But I read in 1 Corinthians 12 where St. Paul describes the church as a body, like, like a physical body where every member of the church works together and can't work alone. A hand can't do its own thing. A foot can't do its own thing. We literally need one another to function. To belong to Christ is to belong to his body. Friends here and friends watching online, we, we have no coherent role or mission apart from the body. And Jesus is the head, as St. Paul said in Ephesians 1, God gave Jesus as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Can you worship God at the beach or Starbucks well, worship in the Bible, all the way back to Genesis 4, always involves sacrifice. The Christian sacrifice was made once for all on the cross for sin, and we represent that sacrifice in the breaking of the bread, code for Holy Eucharist. What I'm doing at the beach and at Starbucks is wonderful, but it's private devotions. And we're called to have a personal walk with God. Jesus did. He often went out alone to pray. But we are more than individuals. We are members of his body. And that's why the book of Hebrews famously says, don't forsake the meeting together of yourselves. See, often people view church attendance like stamp collecting. You can collect stamps on your own, but folks join stamp collecting clubs, right? Right? To meet with others with insider knowledge, to hear motivating speakers and have trading partners. Well, if your relationship with God is an optional activity like membership in a local philatelic society, then, then you've completely misunderstood the nature of your relationship with God. Relationship with Jesus Christ isn't at all like stamp collecting. It isn't optional. We're members of the body. We're saved in the body to be part of the body. To walk apart from the body is to, 
to be an amputated limb severed from walking in God's purpose for your life. Now, now if you're at home and you're watching, I'm not, I'm not throwing condemnation your way for not being here this morning. There are a lot of reasons for not being in church. If you can be in church, be in church. But if you can't, be the church where you're at. And not only that, but our, our love, our common love is at the heart of our public witness. St. John said they will know we are Christians by our love. We witness to God's ability to overcome division when we have friends that we are only friends with because of Jesus. A personal walk, yes, but a personal walk is no substitute for a swim in the communal pool of baptism. Think about sports again. In, in an individual sport, your performance is the only thing that matters. But in a team sport, our performance is part of the team's performance. We practice both on our own and with the team, and then we enter the arena together. Christianity is much more than me and God. It's a team sport. Jesus promised, I will not leave you as orphans. In other words, he's still here now. Well, where do we find Jesus? We find him in his church. When a paramedic comes upon an accident, they check for breathing. It's a sign of life. You, you find a person's breathing by watching their chest go up and down. We find the life of Jesus in his body. Jesus said, it's better for you if I go away. And then suddenly, having sent the Holy Spirit, we find the breath of God in the church. That's spirit and breath are the same word in Greek. And so God is here in his word, in his table, in each other. In the gifts the Holy Spirit has given to the church for the common good. And so friends, this is not about feelings. It's about the promise of God. In the entire Bible, I can think about three times when we have some mention of feelings accompanying God's presence. Instead, mostly God's presence is shown by the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So often, America, did I leave patience out? Okay, oh good, because that one I have trouble with. <laughs> Sometimes I leave that one out. So, so often American Christians view the church as an extension of our personal spirituality. A, a nice thing if that works for you. But the church is more than that. The church supports you in what you believe. The church supports you in what you don't yet believe but ought. The church creates generous people. Did you know that tithing Christians give more money outside of the church than any other American demographic? It's just a fact. In the church, we take care of others and God's, God takes care of us. That's the church. Truly, Christians are nowhere close to perfect. But we are far better than we were before the church. And so let me land here. Why the church? Because it was Jesus' idea. Because it's where Jesus is, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I will be in the midst of them. Why the church? Because word and sacrament are God's mechanism to transform you into the person God designed you to be. As St. Augustine said, eat what you are, become what you eat, the body of Christ. So this morning, devote yourself. They were devoted. Devote yourself to embracing your place, the fullness of your place in his body, to become the fullness of a hand or a foot or an eye or the spleen God designed you to be. To sit under the apostles' teaching, especially the parts that bug you. To be a part of the fellowship, especially with the people who bug you. Devote yourself to being continually fed at his, at his table and to say the prayers until we become like him and grow into the fullness of the stature of him who fills all in all. Amen. Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all, of all that, that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, John, our bishop, Charlie, our bishop-elect, our clergy, Matt, Ken, Kurt, and Steve, and Griselda, the bishop of our companion parish in Cuba, that they may, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also, so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Ron, our governor, and Tracy, our mayor that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We commend to your gracious care and keeping first responders and those serving in our armed forces. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Kelly Birchall Reed, Dora Otter, Charles Otter, Dina Ray Ambrose, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace, so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will 
and walk in thy ways, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. So, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Lord's peace, gentlemen. Glad to see you on this Independence Day weekend. We hope you have a restful, joyful time um, celebrating the, the freedom that we have here in the United States that we believe is a gift from God. Um, as we prepare to give of our tithes and offerings and come up and receive from God here at his altar, um, friends, thank you for consistently giving so generously of your time and your talents and your treasures to this parish. And remember that new covenant giving, New Testament giving, is done generously and cheerfully and without compulsion. So let's walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. <clears throat> lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. <clears throat> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, according to whose true promise the Holy Ghost came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to thy church the power to serve thee as royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, <clears throat> for that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for, for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these holy gifts which we now offer unto thee the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy Father, thy goodness, to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake in this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And also that we and all thy, and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. 
We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of thy precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. <clears throat> we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen.
Uh, there's only one announcement today. Yay! Uh, and, and this, uh, today is the first Sunday of the month, and so um, in Trinity Hall, we will have Celebration Sunday. We will um, um, celebrate with all of the July birthdays. Uh, even if you do not have a July birthday, you're uh, in, uh, welcome to come over for a cup of coffee and a cupcake and uh, celebrate with those who do have a July birthday. Amen? Uh, the piece what, what, of... What time is that, Father? It's right after... Is it right after right the... Now. Right after this service. Right. <laughs> the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ and of, of God and of his son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Please stand for our recessional hymn. <clears throat> Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 